Okay, so uh, just to inform, okay, this will not be a complete interview, and I'll be asking some questions which were not asked uh, in the previous mock interview. Okay, okay. or or maybe in in different way, I'll ask the same question in different way. Okay, so the first question for you, Rakshita, is uh, like, um, <clears throat> what are your learning goals? What are your learning goals for the next two years? So um, I want to develop a very thorough understanding of mental health and modalities of therapy. I feel that the undergraduate studies are very limited in their understanding of the exact skills which are necessary for applying the field in the uh, in a professional sense. So I am going for applied psychology instead of uh, a master's in psychology in general because I want skills which are um, very uh, specific to the field that I'm, I have chosen of clinical psychology. And um, the uh, other goals I, I want to achieve is that first, I want to secondly, uh, have a very thorough understanding of my, uh, of my choice of population, the population that I want to work with. Um, I feel it would, I would be un, able to understand and get a very, uh, bro, a very, uh, a solid idea about my uh, professional um, uh, my professional um, uh, my specific uh, I, uh, my specific uh, niche uh, through the the course in the two years okay so and so let's let's keep this interview also as continuous mock continuous reviewed so so Rakshita, you could have said about some papers some theories or some experiments uh, also because you That's are an, uh, you are a uh, student of psychology so matlab jaise open graduate hote hain to wo thoda futuristic bol sakte hain ki hum related skills sikhna chahenge because they might not know but tumhe to pata pata hoga ki ye is tarike ka subject padhna hai ya is tarike ke tools ya is tarike ke experiments karne hai hai na aur agar nahi bhi pata hai to tum test ki website ko dekh ke ab post graduation ke syllabus ko dekh ke tum हाँ तो आइडेंटिफाई कर सकते हो ठीक है सो 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 टेल मी रक्षिता दैट व्हाट आर द मोस्ट क्रिटिकल रिसर्च दैट इज बीइंग डन इन मॉडर्न डे साइकोलॉजी यू कैन टॉक अबाउट ए वेस्टर्न और इंडियन इन मतलब यू कैन आल्सो बाइफरकेट योर आंसर फॉर वेस्टर्न यूनिवर्सिटीज और वेस्टर्न स्कॉलर्स व्हाट दे आर डूइंग एंड वॉट इंडियन स्कॉलर्स आर डूइंग i have to really look into this uh, but uh, with my with my limited understanding i know that uh, the emerging field in psychology is positive psychology which basically uh, brings about this sense of optimism in psychology and uh, the sense of um, free will within psychology and research is being done in that area of how human beings are uh, have the free will uh, uh, and have their own agency in in charting their uh, their life and their behaviors and how they deal with this sense of meaninglessness and the sense of um, lack of purposeful purposive behavior so i think that is a field of psychology positive psychology where there's a lot of research is being done uh, apart from that uh, from a very uh, from my limited understanding i feel that covid is a very relevant uh, uh, subject at the moment how uh, for example how hypochondriasis which is a disorder that deals with illness anxiety that is something that has been uh, that has been playing out during covid how people are anxious about their health so this is something that uh, and the mental effect uh, impact of covid is something that is being studied at the moment i think as a society collectively we need to be prepared for any sort of epidemic and pandemic that might come in the future this was an unprecedented um, thing but still uh, that has brought in a sense of um, you know a sense of um, initiative in researchers and the professionals to sort of so so do you read uh, so do you read the recent about recent research that what are being done and yes, have sir. you read any paper recently which has been published so i haven't read a paper sorry Uh, so I haven't read a paper per se, but I've uh, seen TED talks about from uh, and there have been a lot of uh, TED talks on the research being done on artificial intelligence and psychology, and and in neuroscience. 
so uh, i think that is also something that um, that is coming up at the at the moment uh, technology being used in psychology for example spect imaging is something that uh, that therapists are and and neuroscientists are trying to use to because uh, the thing is that psychology is the only healthcare field which doesn't that doesn't observe its organ so i think uh, that is something that is being greatly realized especially because of the technological revolution that is taking place and uh, i've seen a lot of ted talks by a lot of uh, accredited psychologists and therapists uh, and lot of their own interviews uh, okay. on, on so that. from next time you can talk less about ted talks and and try to read some papers where yeah, you are actually right. want we virtually want to go matlab you could have said that uh, i don't know what are the research all the research being done but in my interest areas and you know, these research are being done or as a ek paper maine padha hai hai na theek hai okay so so what do you want to do after this course chita like what are the career goals that you have so um i want to be a clinical psychologist and i want to have my own practice so after my masters i will uh, do my mphil and um, apart from that i still i mean i don't since i am just an undergraduate i don't have a very solid idea but i would want to innovate in the field in some way or the other i feel that uh, since in india there is a wave of entrepreneurship and innovation and for mental health to become a mainstream field we need people to think out of the box too so uh, of course i would want to work, work in the clinical setting but um, i think i i would also like to innovate in some manner um, in the field okay so so what are the what are your uh, readings matlab like like what reading habit do you have you do you just read your textbooks or do you also read outside your curriculum uh i like to read about psychology outside my curriculum whenever and if i get the time um so tell me about my... few books that you have read apart from your uh, course book or textbooks well my books the novels that i have read haven't been directly related to psychology per se but for example uh, there there is a book uh, called the 40 rules of love by lif shafak and i mean so psychology is such a pervasive field i feel that um, any sort of uh, story in any sort of novel you read has an implication there there's also this book uh, called T- uh, tuesdays with mori which uh, i think would is very it, it directly deals with the idea of death and the idea of meaning and purpose in life which is the central goal of therapy then um, i mean it's not related to psychology but more to with sociology is a book 1984 by george orwell because i feel that the idea of of how a, a people function as a group in a totalitarian government and within a totalitarian regime uh, how conforming happens through um, in such a such a scenario and in such a light is very relevant to the idea of sociology and social psychology if i have to um, think about it from a psychological perspective then there's also a book called the silent patient uh, which uh is something that i'm currently reading it's uh, it's also it also directly deals with a uh, um a mental health institution and what plays out there okay so so what makes you eligible uh for the career path that you have chosen um i feel that uh, since since childhood i think i have had this Uh, because of my family background maybe my mother and my father both have been really uh, vocal about um, my mother has done courses in emotional literacy and my father is also a poet so uh, i mean these these the sort of uh, ex- and this sort of exposure to the the idea of uh, of emotionality and sensitivity has really um, affected me and has i think charted a course uh, for me to connect with the field in a very organic manner and i feel that my uh, my uh, extra curriculars have really helped me define define me as a person uh, my uh, my experience in sports and athletic basketball athletics and dance have inculcated me in a sense of discipline and resilience and just this training that has made me uh, really sensitive to um, to do things like um, the in, especially in dance things like how dance affects my mental health how dance affects uh, my connection with myself 
and sports as well. So these are some fields that I can connect with psychology to in the future. Dance psychology, dance movement therapy is a field. Then sports psychology. Okay. So, so Rakshita, the next question for you is like, um, uh, consider um, a type of population that I'm talking about, like, uh, uh, what do we say, strata. So, matab, try to visualize a particular segment which has uh, women uh, with uh, matab, under age with the age group of 15 to 30, you know, uh, urban middle class, not married. Okay. So, so just consider this age group women and tell me what kind of stress and uh, distress situations they are prone to. Um, I think this is a, a, a group that I can really relate to. And my paper also on, uh, on, on body image and femininity among young girls. I have directly uh, interviewed a girl of 18 years uh, living in, in the urban area. So if I have to speak about the problems that these that people in this age, in this of this age group and in this data face, I would say first is um, is the idea of uh, of um, of the comparison that comes with being a girl uh, in, in the adolescent age and in um, living in in such a, a in the contemporary world where social media is a thing. Um, I frequently see people. Uh, people indulging in uh, in in this in these attitudes of uh, of of aspiring to look a, a certain way a perfect idea an ideal self that uh, pe that girls uh, create in their minds which are too uh, far fetched and in in that time since they're not able to reach that idea it it takes a toll on their mental health they might they, there is a, an evidence and study of how body uh, of eating disorders uh, are manifest themselves in this age group, how body uh, dysmorphia uh, plays out in this age group. So that is one, I feel, a major issue for girls, especially in, in this very impressionable age. Um, then I, I think that uh, the other issue would be how to see themselves as a as a female within this patriarchal society. It is the time when an adolescent is understanding their identity, forming themselves, forming how they relate to the world and how others see them. So uh, this is the time where you you feel secure or your feeling of security and your strong sense of self plays out in the future. So that is something that I see. There is lack of safety. There is lack of uh, awareness um, amongst the other uh, others also around the uh, society on how to treat women and how to treat girls. And it is one of their first experiences start coming up at this age when they start grow, growing and becoming a woman that they actually uh, deal with issues like um, the issues like constant staring and name calling. So that is something that really acts as a stressor in their, in their lives. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, let's finish this interview right, right now. Anna, so <clears throat> eight minutes.